Hey everyone and welcome to this new video in the AWS Cloud playlist. In this video we will be learning about Amazon S3. Amazon S3 is a very popular service in AWS Cloud. In fact, S3 is one of the oldest service in AWS Cloud. So it's very important for you to learn and understand Amazon S3. And in this video I will teach you what is Amazon S3, how do we use Amazon S3 in real projects, what are S3 buckets, how to create them, how to manage access to your buckets using bucket policy and encryption along with other features like versioning, lifecycle policies and more. We will also be hosting a static website on S3 bucket. So this is going to be a complete video explaining S3 in depth. Make sure you watch it till the end. But if you are new to the channel, make sure to check out other videos in the playlist and also subscribe to CloudChamp. Let's learn S3 now. All right. To get started with learning Amazon S3 and to create buckets, you first need to go to the S3 service, which you can find under the storage option here. So this is S3 or you can simply search for S3 in the search bar. Click on this. So you are now in the S3 service and you can find all the buckets here. I have four buckets right now. For you, it might be zero because you haven't created any bucket and I will show you how to create a bucket. But for most of you who don't know what is S3 bucket, let me quickly explain it to you. Consider this as your AWS account. Inside this account, we are going to be creating an S3 bucket. A bucket is nothing but just a container where you store your files, folders, images, anything. So inside this bucket, we are going to be storing objects, which can be your files, which can be folders, which can be songs, images, anything. And these things that you upload inside a bucket is known as objects. And this is why Amazon S3 is known as object storage service because you store objects inside it. So this is what S3 bucket is and we are going to be creating bucket. So to create a bucket, click on this create bucket option. When you click on this, it will take you to the page where you need to set the configuration for your bucket. So these are all the information you need to fill in to create a bucket. First thing is to select the bucket type. So you can select a bucket type of a general purpose, which you can use for everyday use case to store your files and folders, anything, or you can also use the directory option, which will store your data in directory format. And it is used for low latency use cases. Usually in everyday use cases, you will be using general purpose buckets. So I'll show you how to create them, but the configuration is very similar. So if you understand how to create this, you can also create a directory bucket. Next, you need to choose the bucket name and remember a bucket name should be globally unique. You cannot use the bucket name that has been already used. So if I try with something like test bucket and I click on create bucket option here, I will get an error saying the bucket with the same name already exists. So you need to use a bucket name, which is globally unique not taken by anyone. So I'm going to use something like new cloud champ 2024. If you are following this video and doing it along with me, make sure you use something else, or maybe you can add some random data to create a global unique name for your bucket. Next, I can copy settings from existing bucket. If I want to, you can also manage ownership to your objects using ACL, which stands for access control list. And it is used to manage access to your individual objects inside the bucket. We are going to keep it disabled as a recommended option. By default, AWS will keep your S3 buckets private to make sure you're not exposing your objects. And you can also make it public by disabling this option. But for now, I'm going to keep this bucket private. Next is bucket versioning, which is a feature where you can keep multiple versions of your objects inside a bucket. So similar to GitHub, where you can keep multiple versions of your code in this, you can keep multiple versions of your objects. For now, I'm keeping disabled, uh, no need to add tags. You can also enable encryption to your buckets to make your objects inside the bucket encrypted using Amazon S3 managed keys or using the AWS KMS service. For now, I'm choosing all the default option and let's click on create bucket. This will create a bucket for you if the name is unique. So now I have a bucket created and this is the bucket we have. Once the bucket is created, you can then look for more information about the bucket, different features it has and also choose to see how you can manage permissions to your buckets. So this is the place where you can make your bucket public. There's also bucket policy, which I will be explaining you very soon. You can then check metrics for your buckets, management and so on. For now, there is no object inside my bucket. So let's upload an object. I'm going to click on upload option and upload a file or a folder. So you can upload a single file or you can also upload an entire folder inside S3 bucket. Let's click on add files option here. And in this, I'm going to go to, I'm going to upload this PNG file. So let's click on open option and this will go ahead. Let's click on upload option now. And this will go ahead and upload our bucket. So you can see it's uploading right now, which is a file of 3.6 MB. And once it is uploaded, we can see it inside our S3 bucket. So the file is uploaded. If you click on this, 
you are now here in the object overview you can see more information about the object the owner the region when was it uploaded and also an object url which you can use to access this object when i click on this i get access denied because my bucket is not public so i need to first make the bucket public let's do that to do this i'm going to click on close option in the bucket click on permissions and then you can see block all public access option is here let's edit it and then make this bucket public i'm going to say save changes and confirm to make my bucket public now my bucket is public you can see block all public access is off so now it is public but even if i try it now i'm still getting the access denied error this is because along with making your bucket public you also need to add a bucket policy a bucket policy is a json document that defines what can you do on your bucket it's written in json and provides access to the objects inside the bucket to create this if you already know json you can go ahead and start creating your policy but if you don't know how to write a policy you can also look for policy examples here so these are the policy examples on the aws documentation that you can simply use or else you can also use the policy generator option which is a tool by aws to create policies you can create s3 bucket policy im policy and so on so i'm going to use this tool to create my s3 bucket policy so if that is allow principle is star then you need to choose the actions you can choose to give all actions which means you can do anything in your bucket or else i'm just going to go ahead with get object which is a particular action that i want to use so i want to use this action and then i'm going to put arn arn stands for amazon resource name and you can get the arn for your bucket here so i'm going to copy that but you need to make a change so with this you also need to add slash and star which means every object inside the bucket is going to be applicable with this policy click on add statement generate policy and this will go ahead and generate a policy that i can use for my bucket in this policy you can see we are giving access to get object inside my bucket so let's copy this and paste it here this is how you define access so this is how you give access to your buckets using the bucket policy let's click on save changes so according to this policy now everyone should be able to get the object so if i refresh the page i will be able to see the object because the bucket is public and i have also added the bucket policy so it's very important for you to understand what is a bucket policy how it works because most of the time when you create buckets and you are facing issues it's only because the bucket policy so you need to enable this so this is how you create a bucket upload an object and also manage access to it now i will show you how you can host your static website using amazon s3 bucket so we have our bucket here in this bucket right now we have an object that we uploaded which is cloud.png but i also have website files here so this is my website which includes index.html error.html and a png image that i want to show on my website if i show you this is my website on local machine so you can see this is a local machine website and this is what i want to upload on my s3 bucket and it should be hosted on my s3 bucket so how can we do this let me show you you need to first upload the website files that you want to be shown or hosted on s3 so i'm going to click on add files then go to my folder where my files are so i'll search for my files in the projects so projects my website and these are the three files i want to be using so i'm going to upload them let's click on upload option and this will go ahead and upload all the files once your files are uploaded then you need to go and enable the static website setting which you can find inside properties scroll to the bottom and you can see static website hosting use this bucket to host a website i'm going to click on edit option here click on enable and then you need to fill in the information which is what is your index document so my index file is index.html you can see the file name is index.html and my error file is error.html you have to use the same name it could be index.html or maybe my website.html anything so i'm going to put index.html and if you want me to upload this files on github or if you want me to share this files let me know in the comment section you can use this files or you can also use any other files from chat gpt or anywhere so i'm going to put the name of the file that i want to use for index and error that's all let's click on save changes once you click on save changes s3 will provide you website endpoint which is the name of your bucket .s3/websites region amazonaws.com now when i click on this you can see a website hosted on s3 which is my website and this is how you can host your static websites hosting static website on s3 is cheaper compared to hosting it on aws ec2 so you need to know how to host them if you want me to do this project using ci cd you can let me know we can do the same static website hosting 
but using CI CD pipeline on GitHub Actions. So in this video, I've taught you what is Amazon S3 service, how to create buckets, how to upload objects, how to manage access, and also how to set up static website hosting. Before we end this video, let's quickly revise what we have learned. Now we know Amazon S3 is a durable storage for unstructured data, and it is an object storage unlike other storage services like EBS and EFS. EBS is a block storage, EFS is a file storage, but S3 is an object storage. So S3 is an object storage service that provides scalable, durable, and secure storage. S3 is very similar to other cloud storage tools like Google Drive, Dropbox, where you can upload your files and folders. You can also do the same in Amazon S3 too. Next, we have understand the concept of bucket and an object. A bucket is a container where you put your objects. So the objects are the files that you put inside the bucket. According to AWS, S3 provides you with unlimited storage. So you can store unlimited amount of data, but you can only create 100 buckets in every AWS account. So this is something you need to know. One more thing that you need to know according to the AWS exam is the S3 storage classes. S3 provides you with different storage classes like S3 standard, intelligent tiering, and so on. If you want me to create a video on the storage classes, let me know in the comment section. And if you also want to have a project to create this S3 static website using CI CD pipeline, please put down the comment. I hope this video was informative. And if you have any questions, any doubt, let me know in the comment section. Thank you and see you in the next AWS video. Bye.